This is your brain. This is ADHD. This is your brain on ADHD. Hi, I'm Bryce Walters, and today I'm going to talk to you about one of the most common, yet most misunderstood mental conditions out there. Do you frequently lose important items such as your keys? Do you thrive at difficult tasks, but screw up at the simplest of ones? Does one simple distraction send you on an unending train of thought, fueled by curiosity and intrigue, that leads you far, far away from what you wanted to focus on in the first place? Then you may have Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD. Wait, wait, did you just say ADHD? Bet. ADHD. I was diagnosed just seconds after I came out of the womb. I thought it was ADD, Adequate Discipline Deficiency. My mom just thinks it's an excuse for bad parenting. Nah, you ain't with it, Holmes. ADHD is the official medical term for the condition. ADD was canceled in like the 90s, bro. Well, people still use it, it's just that term is a bit outdated now that there are three subtypes. That term was only used to describe people with inattentive type ADHD, leaving out the hyperactive kids like me. Wow, I didn't realize people still think those kinds of things are true. Someone should do a PSA on this. Due in part to a misrepresentation in media, there are several myths that exist about ADHD. ADHD is a fake medical condition created by lazy people. ADHD just means you can't focus, are distracted, or have chaotic energy. ADHD is something you can outgrow as an adult. As for myth one, it's time to get sciency. I'm gonna bring in a doctor for this one. In fact, she's a board certified pediatric neurologist. ADHD is not correlated with intelligence or IQ. People can have ADHD with any level of intelligence, any level of IQ, all the way up to genius level and still have ADHD. There are fundamental neurobiological and neurochemical differences in people with ADHD in their brains that is potentially prompting why they have more trouble with emotional regulation, why they have more trouble with impulsivity, restless movements, more trouble sustaining attention as well. While a lot of people think that all ADHD is the same, there are actually three different types, but we'll get into that later. Now, let's go on a totally tubular journey to find out what some of the most common symptoms of ADHD are. And, chances are, if several of these apply to you, you may have some form of ADHD. Do you find yourself losing important items all the time? And does finding them seem impossible? Not this again, Kevin! I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm getting warmer. Woo! The whiteboard, Kevin! Do you ever find yourself in the shower for over three hours thinking about thoughts that just won't stick? If time is an illusion, isn't time travel technically real? Did Pavlov think about his dogs every time a bell rang? If two vegans argue, is it still called beef? Are frat boys and liberal arts the new women in STEM? Here are some great metaphors by people with ADHD to help explain how living with it feels. A hamster wheel that you can never get off. Race car brain. It moves fast, is well engineered, and capable of more than your average vehicle. So all the strategies and support and medication are helping them learn how to drive and stay in control of the race car. Fireworks of ideas exploding in her brain. Some brilliant and bright, some loud, and occasionally a few duds. A train without a conductor. Speaks on full blast, indie race with no finish line. A Ferrari brain with bicycle brakes. That brings us to myth two. While these are all true and valid accounts of how ADHD works, it's important to remember that everyone's ADHD diagnosis is unique. So there are three types of ADHD. ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, but we actually break it down into the three separate types. The first type is the predominantly inattentive type. Predominantly inattentive type 
means people who have difficulty focusing, forgetting details, need things to be repeated, are easily distracted, or easily procrastinate, may be prone to losing things. Those are not necessarily people who have excess energy or hyperactivity. The predominantly hyperactive impulsive type, those are people who are characterized by lots of excess energy, having trouble staying still, impatience and impulsivity, getting up, walking around when they shouldn't, rambling or talking on tangent, being unintentionally loud. And then the third type, the combined types for people who have several features of both the inattentive and hyperactive impulsive types. People may unintentionally dominate conversations, have quick emotional responses or outbursts, inappropriate oversharing, blurt out answers, or have risk-taking behavior. Do you get in the way of other people's needs because of your own indecisiveness? All right, is everyone ready for me to take your order? Yep, got mine ready. Yeah, I just, I just have a few questions first. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, I'm actually ready right now, so I'll go first. Uh, I'll have the roasted. So if I get the burger, does that come with two sides or it does? Ooh, actually, do you recommend the gator dog? Yeah, it's pretty popular. Sweet. So I'll have the roasted. Ooh, chicken. actually, maybe I'll get the bacon werewolf. Mm, wait, no. TikTok says the bacon is a millennial. Hey man, no disrespect, but I have hypoglycemia and if you don't decide within the next 20 seconds, I'm gonna pull a Paul Blart and crawl on the ground for a lollipop. I'm sorry guys, I just, I, I haven't had to make a decision this difficult since David Archuleta or David Cook. I... Not even college? This is just too much pressure. Ooh, okay, um, just... Just go to the chef and ask them what they would order, and then I'll take that. I, I just can't decide right now. Sir, this is a hot dog joint. We don't have a chef. Screw it. Let's just go to McDonald's. This is too complicated. I can't really. <sighs> wait, wait. I've definitely done that before. Do you think I have ADHD? Well, let's keep watching. The DSM requires at least six symptoms to be present in order to actually diagnose it as ADHD. Well, that's for kids, five for 17 and up. Okay, well, I'm just happy it all wears off when you grow up. It'll all be fine in a couple years, dude. Yo, unfortunately, that's not true. Look, this is the part that you should really pay attention to. What? Last but not least, ADHD looks very different in children than it does in adults. Although ADHD was once considered to be a childhood disorder, it is now acknowledged to persist into adulthood in about 46 to 66% of cases. According to the Vivance website, about 10.5 million adults suffer from ADHD. That's 4.5% of adults. 4 to 6% of adults in the US have ADHD, though that figure is thought to be underreported because 85% of kids with ADHD don't outgrow it and 90% of women have not been diagnosed. Most people with ADHD don't outgrow the symptoms. They may gain better ability to control the symptoms as they get older, but it may still continue to be a lifelong struggle for them. Adult ADHD is associated with greater marital problems, unemployment, and difficulties in the workplace. Adults with ADHD struggle in their relationships, obtaining and maintaining employment, and are even statistically more vulnerable to premature death from accidents. Everyone can be forgetful and distracted sometimes. And every now and then, we've all tuned out in our classes or meetings, lost our keys, or even accidentally left our phone in the freezer. While you may think this sounds a lot like you, Individuals born with ADHD experience those things on a regular basis. In fact, people who have ADHD often have to work even harder and put more effort into the same task than someone without it. ADHD is not a choice, a fluke, or a bad day. This is something that can be hard to grasp for others. ADHD often comes out in most people when they're in a learning environment. People with ADHD often experience more obstacles in their path to success than the average student. Do you ever find yourself not focusing on what's actually important? Kevin, your father and I are getting a divorce. One sec, I gotta get to the punchline of this TikTok. <laughs> Wait, what? Sometimes when things are said, a person's reaction is extremely delayed. This is a delayed processing aspect of ADHD that mimics a similar condition called auditory processing disorder. This can cause people to seem tuned out due to misplaced attention and not react or respond when spoken to at first. They may act like they did not hear what someone said, but this is not a hearing issue, but rather a difficulty with focus and inattention issue. Do you find basic errands like going to the grocery store to be impossible without a chaperone there to keep you on track?
Okay, he only asked for three things, gonna be in and out. In and out, in and out, no distractions. I got this. Oh, what was it again? Something like egg, milk, flowers? It's not eggplant. Why is there taco meat? And where's the flour? What? I thought you wanted flowers. ADHD does not create an inability to focus, but a prevention from focus on the dog. Attention is dysregulated. Sometimes that's focusing only on what is of interest, and sometimes that means paying attention to everything. In fact, when something is interesting, ADHD can cause one to hyper-focus or focus excessively on one topic. Sometimes this can cause people to come off as rude or uninterested to others, but really they're hyper-focused on certain details or distracted by an interruption. It can cause people to zone out and not hear a word someone is saying sometimes, but also can listen and think about a million things at once while still retaining what they Say. People with ADHD may find they have to fidget or do something mindless with their hands in order to be able to fully listen to someone or someone's story. It can be very difficult to tell a story in a coherent and organized manner. Mark wanted to come over last night, but there were just too many people, you know? Okay. And I didn't want to be over 15, you know? Sure, sure. I told him no, but he like wouldn't take no for an answer. What? That's crazy. Yeah, like, it is crazy. He was like, no one will have fun without me, yada, 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 like. Or, on the other hand, when it comes to listening, it can sometimes be difficult to give the people the attention they deserve. Whoa, no, so not cool. So I was like, but I can only invite five people. Because otherwise it would be over 15. Ow! Are you listening? Yeah, no, I'm listening, I'm listening. No, I'm listening, I swear. Yeah, and like, that's just not safe. And I'm not the one trying to get canceled out here. Like, I don't want to be one of those people, you know? Mark said he doesn't want to get canceled, right? Dude, I hate when you do this. What? You're no help. Yeah, I got nothing, bro. Didn't hear a word you just said. I'm calling Gina. Likewise, they might have trouble paying attention to someone talking because other distractions and interruptions are happening. Again, it's not them being rude, it's just that it's harder for them to filter out those unimportant distractions and interruptions and focus on the person they're supposed to be talking to compared to other people. Have you ever texted someone the wrong thing just because you were focused on something else that someone else was saying? So, I met him at a Walmart. Which is insane because, you know, sometimes you find love in unexpected places. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, wait, sorry, I'm listening. I'm just responding to my boss real quick. No, you're totally good. And it's crazy how fast things are moving between us. You know, we're thinking about getting a sex swing, which is, you know, pretty scandalous. A sex swing. Oh, shit. What? So six in 10 children with ADHD also have another comorbid condition. It's a mental or behavioral condition. Those things commonly include anxiety, depression, learning disabilities, can include bipolar disorder, tic disorders like Tourette syndrome, oppositional defiant disorder. So all of those things are very important to watch out for in children who have ADHD. According to Forbes, people with ADHD are three times more likely to start their own business due to thinking outside the box. And 60% of entrepreneurs have ADHD. When trained properly, ADHD could be a superpower. It's important to recognize that medication is just one aspect of the treatment. Behavioral therapy helps people with ADHD to learn skills, strategies, and be able to deal with school, jobs, and families. A different combination of treatments works best for everyone depending on their specific case. Physical exercise has proven to be nearly equivalent in effectiveness to stimulant medications, especially highly structured aerobic activity. Making use of organizational tools like calendars, alarms, sticky notes, and daily planners could also help in managing memory issues and other symptoms of ADHD. There are a lot of stigmas associated with ADHD. 
Several people are often labeled in negative lights until they can find a balanced way that works for them to control their symptoms. It's common for parents or teachers to say that they're a bad kid because they have trouble paying attention. They don't realize that it's the underlying disorder, ADHD, that makes it very difficult for children to pay attention. And that it's not them being a bad kid or being lazy or being stupid. But those are the kinds of words that sometimes get applied to people when the diagnosis is not well understood. In reality, people with ADHD can be funny, creative, loyal friends, and extremely successful due to their ability to think innovatively and non-linearly. ADHD is not an illness that can't be cured. It's how your brain is wired. You can use medication that works on your neurotransmitters to temporarily reduce some of your symptoms, but your executive functioning is always going to be compromised. No one diagnosis or treatment fits all. ADHD creates a unique breed of individuals. Although at times they are hard to handle, they are dedicated friends and fun to be around in the right setting. Hopefully, a greater awareness of the disorder can help those with ADHD and people who know them understand their actions and celebrate their individualism. For parents out there, maybe your child won't grow up to be Steven Spielberg, Serena Williams, Emma Watson, Whoopi Goldberg, Michael Phelps, or Michael Jordan. Or maybe they will. As it turns out, all of them have ADHD. So did Agatha Christie, Cher, Thomas Edison, JFK, Beethoven, Henry Ford, and Vincent van Gogh. The honor roll goes on and on, reminding us that those with ADHD can live rich and productive lives. So, do you think you learned a lot about ADHD? Yeah, I didn't think there were earthquakes in the South. What? I didn't think there were earthquakes in the oh, South. Oh, I got it. You said you didn't think there were earthquakes in the South? When I was a kid, my parents had my hearing tested over 25 times, but that wasn't the problem. My brain's got a bit of a lag, so sometimes I'll ask people to repeat themselves, only to realize what they were actually saying halfway through them repeating. That's called delayed processing, right? Oh, how the turntables. <laughs> Look who's paying attention now. Oh, don't even come after me on attention. You're the one with the deficit. Bro, did you learn nothing? Deficit, sit your ass down and listen. I don't have the inattentive type, meaning I can focus fine. Okay, fine. Then what's with all the incessant leg shaking? Oh. That's just me. Sometimes I don't even realize I'm doing it. Sorry, I forgot to take my meds this morning. Oh, by the way, speaking of meds, I have a paper due tomorrow. Can I please borrow an Adderall? Wait, what? applies to you, you might have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. The real problem isn't really whether there are too many or too few people getting diagnosed with ADHD. It's the right people getting the right treatment. Don't go through life undiagnosed or wondering if you could be meeting your potential. If you think you have ADHD, make an appointment with your doctor and get evaluated. The more we understand ADHD and other learning and attention issues, the better we can fight the stigmas that surround them and understand and support those who have them. Now let's go on a totally tubular journey. Totally tubular. Now, let's go on a totally tubular discovery. Totally tubular discovery. Hey,